Hello, everyone, and welcome to Biohackers Lab. I'm your host, Gary Kerwin, and on today's episode, I have Dr. Bruce Bean. Dr. Bean is a professor of neurobiology at Harvard Medical School, and he's also the co-inventor of a product called Hotshot, which is exactly what we're going to be talking about today. Bruce, thanks so much for coming on to the show. Glad to be here, Gary. Great. Pleasure. So the reason I got you on is because years ago, I read an article uh, with your other co-inventor, um, Dr. McKinnon, about cramping, and it was so novel what I read at that time. So would you mind just explaining um, the beginnings of Hotshot? Because that's the story that I read. Yeah, well, uh, I'm a research neurophysiologist. Rod is also a, a research neurophysiologist uh, and a chemist. He won the, no won the Nobel Prize in chemistry. But we actually developed this not through our labs originally, but from our hobby of ocean kayaking. And it came about because we were ocean kayaking longer and longer distances as we got into it. And one day, it was a cold day in the fall, uh, we simultaneously suffered muscle cramping in our, in our arms while we were out on the open ocean, uh, quite far from where we'd put in. Uh, it was actually kind of frightening because uh, it was a windy day. It was cold. It happened to us simultaneously. We couldn't paddle for a while. And that got us very interested in muscle cramping. What causes it? You know, we had been drinking electrolyte solutions, uh, you know, religiously and had a lot for lunch. And so we were sure it wasn't that we were dehydrated. It wasn't that we, you know, had used electrolytes. None of the things that we'd sort of learned about in medical school or graduate school uh, could explain it. And so we began reading about it and, uh, and researching it. And every time we'd go kayaking together, we would talk more about what we had each read, what we'd learned. Uh, and over course, the course of a couple of years, you know, we learned that uh, everything that, that we had been told about muscle cramping had recently been shown to be wrong. And so, for example, Muscle cramping is not caused by dehydration. Um, this has been shown in a number of studies. It's not uh, associated with electrolyte depletion in general. You know, if you look at marathon runners who, who suffer muscle cramping, it's not because they have electrolyte depletion. It's not buildup of lactic acid. And recent research showed that it's actually not the muscle itself, but it's the nerve that controls the muscle that produces the muscle cramping. It's basically like a mini seizure of the motor neuron that controls the muscle. Uh, and so that, that was really the beginning of it. And then we began experimenting on ourselves. Um, we began uh, putting uh, uh, surface EMG electrodes on ourselves to, to quantify muscle cramping um, and did a whole series of experiments over a couple of years where we were experimenting on ourselves and then started to develop various, uh, various remedies the upshot of which was was the development of, of Hotshot. Yeah, so would you say then that your research from that event <clears throat> has probably turned around the thinking in science of what causes muscle cramps? Well, I would say it's a little bit less our research. Uh, our research was really to find the remedy. The, uh, the knowledge that muscle cramping was coming from the nerve and not the muscle uh, was being done by other people simultaneously, actually, as we were doing this, um, and particularly a guy named Martin Schwellness, and, and, uh, an exercise physiologist in South Africa, uh, and, uh, and some other people. Uh, so it, things were, as often happens in science, sort of coming together uh, and people realizing that muscle cramping really was the nerve and not the muscle. And that was really the, 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 the really ch real change in our understanding of muscle cramping. Mm. And, and that's, that's very well accepted now by exercise physiologists. But as with many things, you know, it takes a while for the news to spread. Yeah, because I would say in general public, most people would still think, oh, I've got a cramp in my leg. It's because I'm, I'm not drinking enough water or I haven't had enough, say, magnesium or sodium, like salt in my diet. But you're exactly. saying maybe that's not the case. It isn't the case. And in fact, it's interesting because there are a number of cases, actually quite tragic cases uh, uh, over the last three or four years where People have actually died from drinking too much water and electrolyte solution because they were having cramping, because they had thought that it was because they were dehydrated. And if you uh, drink too much water or even uh, electrolyte solutions, your, your blood sodium level can go so low that it's dangerous. 
And that's happened in a number of cases. And it, all of us, I think, felt this. I, we certainly thought this when we were getting our cramping. Oh, it's because we're not drinking enough, you know, not drinking enough. Um, and it was really only after reading the research and, and, and looking into it that we realized that that was not true. Okay. So I'm just interested then. So magnesium, which does help cramping, that's probably then also working more on a neurological level, would you say? Yes, I think so. Although, as far as I know, there's no scientific evidence that magnesium does help cramping. Now, enough people anecdotally say that it does, particularly with night cramping, mm. that I'm inclined to uh, think there's something to it. But there actually have not been studies done, done with it. Um, and in fact, you know, we were motivated to do rigorous controlled studies with Hotshot because we wanted to show scientifically that it worked. We have done that. Uh, that really has not been done with any other remedies, um, with the single exception of quinine, which was used as the remedy for night cramps for many years. Uh, and it's now, uh, uh, it can't, cannot be used in the U.S. because there's a number of very serious side effects from it, um, thrombocytopenia that people get. It's still used in the, in the U.K. Um, but other than that, the hotshot is really the only uh, remedy for which there's scientific evidence that it, that it that it reduces cramping. That is fascinating. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So because I live in the UK, so I I come across people who've taken that you know, um, quinine. Um, so you because I, I, what I read with your research study that you got a massive reduction in cramp, didn't you? And people who would normally cramp, is that right? Yes. 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 It's it's very significant. It's you know I don't have the statistics right in front of me, but it's roughly by you know, reducing cramping by about half uh, in the very we've done, which is quite significant. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, it's definitely doing something. Um, so I, I'm also interested um, in the in the world of running, which um, is this particular product, I guess, is, is more popular in right now. Um, other runners have also talked about something called pickle juice. Is this different to pickle juice or is this the same as pickle juice for cramping? It's, it's completely different in its composition. You know, it's possible that the mechanism is actually somewhat similar uh, because pickle juice, uh, one of the elements in pickle juice is acetic acid. Uh, and we think the molecular target of what's in hot shot are trip channels. These are channels, channels, uh, ion channels that are in sensory neurons. Those are activated by, the, by acetic acid and pickle juice as well. Um, and in fact, in one formulation of, uh, of our remedies, we tried uh, a background of acetic acid. Um, the problem is that it tastes horrible. Acetic acid really tastes horrible. And so part of the uh, formulation of Hotshot was to develop ways of stimulating nerves that we think actually are much more effective than pickle juice, than the acetic acid, and also far, far more palatable. Mm. And you've mentioned the... Um the key ingredient, I would say, which is uh, these things called transient receptor potential, are they? Is that is that the? That's right. So, and the, uh, and what I read is that um, you're particularly trying to activate these sensors in your mouth, your throat, and your esophagus. Exactly right. Yeah, yeah, that's exactly right. That's the I, that's the that's the that's the hypothesis we came up with. And in a nutshell, the the scientific hypothesis is as follows: that. The cramping we know originates from excessive activity of the motor neurons in the spinal cord that control the muscle. That's really, I would say, quite clear. And it's a general property of, of nerve circuits, of neural circuits, that if you, there's a balance between inhibition and excitation in nerve circuits. And so what's happening is that there's an imbalance, and, and there's an imbalance in the direction of excitation from the motor neurons. That's what's producing the cramping. And a general principle of neural circuits is that if you produce a very strong input into the circuit from somewhere else, then you can ramp up the overall tone of the circuit. And so that's the way we think hotshot is working, that by activating the, the neurons in the mouth and the esophagus and probably the stomach, that's putting an input into the spinal cord, which then damps down the motor neurons, which are producing the cramping. So this... This ability, because the signals are going through the spinal cord, uh, even though you're taking the product by your mouth, um, it can help cramping anywhere. We're not just talking about cramping in your calves or cramping in your legs. Like if someone's uh, doing a sport and they tend to cramp between their shoulder blades or in their 
their shoulders or something. This we're, we're looking at the same mechanism here. Yes, yes, exactly. We think it should it should uh, be true of really any motor neurons. There's an additional part of the of the mechanism that we hypothesize, and I have to say we don't have evidence for this, but I think it's fairly reasonable that what we're doing here is we're we're really stimulating these nerves, these sensory nerves in the in the mouth, the esophagus, and the stomach, and that may also modify some modulators uh, like norepinephrine, dopamine, um, serotonin, and this is actually very similar to a treatment that's being used now for for epilepsy, uh, which is vagal stimulation. Um, which was uh, kind of developed like a lot of things in neurology by, by trial and error, where if you stimulate the vagal nerve, um, which, which has ascending, it has, it's a, you, you can stimulate sensory nerves here, you can alleviate epilepsy. And so we think we may be working with a very similar mechanism in the sense that we're stimulating nerves, not with electrical stimulation, the way that's done in, in clinical vagal stimulation, but you know, in a much more uh, actually kind of natural way by using these natural products, by stimulating the nerves in the, in the mouth. And, uh, but we think that the mechanism of action may actually be, uh, have a lot in common with vagal stimulation. There, the idea is that it, it modulates the uh, release of transmitters like norepinephrine, serotonin, and dopamine, which then modify the neural circuits producing epilepsy. So this sounds a little bit to me like um, helping someone who's either sympathetic driven or um, so who's overexcited with that sympathetic nervous system and the vagal tone is coming in and helping them balance out again. So they're going in it, from uh, fight and flight to more rest and digest sort of, is that sort of what we're looking at here? It's, yeah. In, in, the ter- in, in the case of vagal stimulation, very much. Yeah. It's, it's, it's sort of changing the balance and we think we're doing the same kind of thing here. Uh, maybe not in the same circuit, but in a very similar, in a very similar kind of concept. Mm. So, and do you think then, is there a particular reason you would hypothesize why some people might be more prone to cramping during sporting events than others? It's a really good question. Uh, you know, I, this is just pure speculation, but one speculation would be that there's something different about their modulatory transmitter systems. You know, they're their dopamine receptors, their serotonin receptors, norepinephrine receptors, and so forth. Uh, and these are all things that do vary a lot between individuals, and that's, that's very well known in other contexts. So that would be a very reasonable hypothesis. Uh, and, you know, personally, I think that's fairly likely because, interesting. you know, there are people who cramp extremely easily. Mm. And if you talk to these people, and we've now talked to a lot of these people because, you know, they, they're very interested in the, in hotshot and the mechanism and people will say, look, I know it's not dehydration because, you know, I always get cramps. The other thing that's interesting about cramping is that the uh, cramping always comes in the muscle that you're using repetitively. So uh, that is, again, something that tells you it's not electrolytes in the blood. It's not electrolytes in the blood that are changing and changing your muscles all over. It's the repetitive use of a muscle that actually induces the cramping uh, somehow. And so um, we think it's, you know, probably subtle differences in the in the makeup of the nervous systems of, of people that give some people susceptibility to cramps and other people never get cramps at all. Mm, that's why I love this. Uh, I really wanted to get you on because we're talking about yeah how your brain connects with your body and everyone is different, and yet you found something that could sort of influence that system. And it's yeah. it's a natural product, isn't it? It's, it's got natural ingredients. It's, it's completely natural. Yeah, yeah. So all of the ingredients are are from are plant from plant based uh, things. When we first started experimenting on ourselves, we actually you know started by getting uh, extracts of various plants that. Were used in in in, in the, as a matter of fact, um, because we wanted to get things that we knew were safe to experiment with ourselves, uh, and so everything is made from natural products. It's actually organic. Um, uh, it's what's called NSF certified, which is important for use by professional athletes. So it's all certified for for use by uh, by professional athletes. Um, so it's perfectly safe to use. You know, much less invasive than actually like 
you know, using a vagal nerve stimulation or something like that, mm. much safer than, than quinine also, which has, you know, is a serious drug. It actually has a number of side effects. Mm. Yeah. Cause I mean, uh, that's what this whole show is called about biohackers lab. And it's about biohacking the concept of N equals one physiology and testing yourself and, and trying to optimize yourself. And you sound like a proper biohacker where you like to test on yourself. This was exactly, I mean, we are totally on your wavelength. Because the thing that was most fun about this was when Rod and I realized we can test this on ourselves. Because what we learned is that you can induce cramping in yourself just with a little, little uh, $15 uh, external. Um, now, I should say, you know, just for the, for the you know, people listening that uh, really it should only use, be used by a professional. Um, Rod is a physician, and so he is a professional. Um, but you can induce cramping in yourself very easily. You just you you stimulate your muscle at about 10 hertz or 15 hertz, and it will go into cramping. Um, and and so you can do that in a very reliable way. And we started doing that with ourselves. Um, initially, uh, we made sort of an error in judgment, and we didn't realize how little stimulation it took to actually stimulate a muscle externally. Uh, we started off by using a 240 volt um, <laughs> stimulator that that was a lab surplus thing. Uh, it, it was succeeded in burning our skin really badly when we were uh, first <laughs> experimenting with that. And then we realized we could do it just with a nine volt battery with little thing you know called a tens unit, yeah. um, which is used uh, uh, clinically for uh, for example for stimulating muscles uh, in people who have paralysis and so forth. Uh, and you can do this in a very reliable way. We were able to then, you know, do do experiments on ourselves. It was so much fun because there aren't many parts of biology where it's safe and 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 uh, you know where you can get doing self experimentation. But this was a case where it was. So how did you sort of go down the route of? Um, would you say that the ingredients are spicy or hot? Is that the best way to describe them? Yeah. Uh, yes, absolutely. Yeah, they, they are spicy and hot. You're stimulating the receptors. The receptors that are being stimulated uh, are a combination of what are called trip V1 channels. These are the channels that are activated by high heat. That if they're extremely activated in, in nerves will give you a sensation of burning. Uh, these are also the channels that are activated by capsaicin, which is the active ingredient in, in hot peppers. And so as with capsaicin, you can you can titrate the the activation, so it's not necessarily painful. You know, you get a you get a sensation of warmth. Um, it's been titrated in hot shot. Uh, it was done by you know a very sk skilled development team who took our prototypes and developed it so that the taste was vastly improved, so that the activity was preserved, but where the uh, sensation of of heat was dialed down to a point where, you know, where actually, I actually like it a lot. You, you, you drink it, you get a, I would say a feeling of a warm glow that, that, that you get, which is actually very pleasurable. I mean, it's almost like, you know, it's totally non-alcoholic, but you almost get a feeling like having Euphoria. taken, a, uh, exactly. Or yeah. taken a, a shot of whiskey on a cold day or something like that, uh -huh. uh, even though there's no alcohol in it. So it's activating those receptors. So it's spicy in that sense. Uh, the other act, Channels that it activates are called trip A1 channels. These channels are activated, for example, by the active ingredients in cinnamon, um, uh, in, in, in ginger, and a whole variety of other natural products. So it's feel, it's not painful, but you definitely are aware of the fact that your nerves are being stimulated. So this this isn't like biting into a chili. No, no, it's much it's much milder than that. Uh, and, you know, that, again, that's something that was titrated really, really well by the team that, that worked on developing our prototypes into a commercial mm -hmm. product. So because I was wondering then, um, anyone who's sort of sensitive to hot foods, who can't handle hot foods, um, would they be able to still try hot shots, do you think? Hot shot? Uh, I mean, I, if somebody really, uh, you know, hates having any kind of hot food, um, you know, they may, they may not like it. And I think we've gotten the reaction from actually very few people. I was a little bit surprised. Very few people have said, oh, it's too spicy for me. It's too hot. I can't take it. Um, the, the opinion, you know, the reaction that we've got from a lot of people, even who don't 
like spicy food as well. You know, if it, it helps me with my muscle cramping and I'm fine with it, you know, a little spiciness I'm going to tolerate. A lot of other people actually like it. And um, uh, I'm one of them. Um, quite a few of the professional athletes who, who use it uh, take it, you know, before their workout regularly, during their workout, after their workout. And a lot of people say they actually, you know, like the taste. And I, I, I like the taste quite a lot myself. I, it, it's a, it peps you up. I mean, it's a little bit like a pick-me-up, you know, without caffeine or alcohol. So it doesn't create, uh, I guess, maybe some athletes would think uh, that they're going to get like an after effect from taking it, like a, a regurgitate. There's not sort of that issue normally, is there? No, again, surprise, you know, again, that was something we wondered about a little bit. We didn't experience that ourselves. Uh, we tried it on family members. Nobody had that problem. And that's that's been really not something that people have mentioned at all uh, among the athletes who've been using it. Good. So they're not going to be running with heartburn. <laughs> No, exactly. <laughs> yeah, because I actually happened to see that was it the um the ladies uh so the female winner of the Comrades Marathon in South Africa in 2017, she used as your product, doesn't she? Uh, that sounds familiar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think um, yeah. I think, yeah. I think I did see because uh, I'm from South Africa originally myself, even though I live in the UK now. So I, I think I did see a picture of her, a, a part of her gear for the for the day of the event. And I mean, that's a, I believe that's about a 90 kilometer run. So it's, it's a ultra marathon run. That's right. And it's really the first sort of heavy users. The first people who, who were really interested in it were ultra marathoners, um, the Ironman triathletes who do, you know, really, uh, because those are people who get cramping a lot. And if they do get cramping, then their competition is over. So they were the people who were most interested in the product early on, and a lot of them are, are using it. I can imagine golfers in high intense situations when they're doing playoffs need to do a shot of this just to sort of mellow out. You know, that's very interesting. It's something that's come up a number of times. I don't, I actually don't know of anybody, you know, that we've we we've sort of talked about. I don't think golfers are so aware of it, but it's kind of interesting because golfers get what they call the yips, mm. where basically a tremor in their uh you know in their hands which which is obviously debilitating during putting it's actually very common and we think that this mechanism you know may very well quiet that also although it's not something that we have tested you know even anecdotally yet so i'd, I'd love it you know if mm. there's golf listening to this uh, who suffer from this it'd be really interesting to know if it helps with it yeah, I can imagine so many applications because if you think what well, the way I'm looking at this is this substance is affecting your nervous system. So basically, wherever your nervous system gets overexcited and then you freeze, you could potentially use this product to try to see if it could mitigate that effect. Exactly. Yep. Yeah. So there's so many applications in that sense. And the great thing about it is that because it's completely natural, you know, you, know, you have no fear about trying it. So there's really no barrier for anybody to just see if it helps helps them and you know whatever issue they have along those lines so are there any um side effects that people need to be aware of if there is anything related to the product uh no not at all uh, none, none none that we're aware of i mean the only you know again if someone's really hates spicy food then they should try it and, you know <laughs> see if they can tolerate it but other than that there's really no side effects that that that, that we that we've been told about or have experienced and dosage wise um so i'm i'm always interested in thinking if you've got say a petite female versus a big bodybuilder guy would they need different dosages you know i don't know that's an interesting question i think people you know it, it's packaged in a in a 1.7 ounce uh, shot um, which seems to be optimal for most people and i think most people uh, you know, drink the shot. Uh, I think it's probably true for, you know, for, for, um, uh, we were just talking with James Devlin, who's a, a fullback on the, uh, and a professional, um, uh, football team it was quite large. Uh, and, you know, at the same time, um, Shalane Flanagan, uh, you know, much more petite, uh, distance runner uses it. I think they both, you know, use one shot at a time. So, um, some people might take, you know, half of it at first and then drink the other half five minutes later or something like that. Uh, many people uh, I know using it during training will take it before they start, let's say, a long bike, 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 uh, bike training run. 
will take it uh, during during the bike training and then after again. Um, so I, I'd say it's all trial and error by the individual person, really, sort of how much they're they're going to take. Yeah, again, and if I think about it, that you're just affecting the nervous system. That yeah, it, you might not need much, so it doesn't matter on your body mass size because it's coming through the mouth, which is exactly. going to get yeah. That, that's exactly right. This is working in a very different way than you know normally a drug you would calculate you know migs per kilogram or something because it's getting into your bloodstream. This isn't, and this exactly exactly what you say. This is working by a mechanism where that kind of dosage really doesn't apply. So to get the best benefits with those TRP uh, receptors that you were mentioning, is it best to swirl it around your mouth or even um, have you ever heard of anyone gargling it to affect vagal tone in that sense? Yeah, we, you know, people have kind of experimented that and we, we've done that ourselves. Uh, we haven't done that in sort of a rigorous controlled way. Um, so I'm not really sure. Because it, it's true, you would get more exposure to the nerves in your mouth by sort of swirling it around or garlic or, or, or gargling it. Um, but you also definitely feel it in your esophagus and your stomach. And so we don't really know how much of the uh, effect is from nerves in the mouth, how much from the esophagus, how much in the stomach. Uh, and so we, you know, and just anecdotally, we certainly see some effect of just gargling it and spitting it out. You know, we've done that to to a limited extent, um, but we haven't really sort of rigorously compared those. I think, again, it's something, you know, along the spirit of biohacking, um, this is something that, you know, people should do individually. And it'd mm. be, we've learned so much about this from the people who have used it. You know, we've learned so much about this from athletes coming back and other people coming back and saying how they use it, um, you know, what it seems like for them. Uh, and something like that along these lines, I think it's, it really should be through self-experimentation that probably varies from person to person. Mm -hmm. So we've talked a lot about athletes so far, um, but we did touch a little bit on night cramps. So would non-athletes be allowed to use this too, to see if it could help their cramps? Cause I, I do know a lot of people suffer with cramping in their legs at night. Do you think yeah. maybe they could experiment taking a hot shot before they go to bed to see if they have less cramps in the night? Absolutely. It's very, night cramping is very common and there's no reason at all not, not to try it. Um, you know, it's not something that we have uh, rigorously studied scientifically, you know, so I can't, you know, unlike uh, sort of muscle cramping uh, with, with during athletics, we can't say that we know uh, for sure that it works, but um, you know, there's no reason for people not to try it for that. It's again, it's perfectly safe to try. Mm, and, a, and a safer alternative to, as you mentioned, the other medication potentials, well, that are still available here in the UK. Exactly. And I can say, actually, from my very own experience, I I tend to get muscle cramping if I uh, do an activity that I haven't done for a while, and I do it fairly intensely. So, for example, um, you know, I don't normally uh, work out on a bike much, but my wife got a stationary bike, and I got kind of carried away. Uh, you know, trying it out and, and, and using it. And I got cramping, um, not so much when I was using it, but actually at night for a couple of nights when I would be sleeping, my calf muscles cramped up. And uh, I found hot shot uh, was very effective in, in, in alleviating the cramps there. And I've heard from, you know, a number of people anecdotally that there's sort of a, a crossover between sort of night cramping, particularly in calf muscles, and exertion, you know, so, so actually one of my sisters told me that if she wears high heels and hasn't done that for a while, she'll tend to get cramping in her calf at night. Uh, and, and that hot shot works very well for that. Yeah. And I'm even thinking for headache sufferers who tend to get tension headaches with tension in their shoulders, it could be just one of the substances maybe to play with to see if it changes the tension in their, in their upper back and their neck. Exactly. It's an easy thing to try. Mm. Yeah. Again, that's, this is why I wanted to get you on because there's so many applications, I believe, to this, even though I guess the main thought process is always about sport. But I see so many other avenues because we're talking about how you influence your nervous system, that which influences your muscles at the end of the day. And this is a, a natural, easy way to try, see if you can fix it quickly. Exactly. Yeah, fantastic. Um. Are there any other points you'd like to bring up about hot shots that we haven't touched on that uh, you feel that people would need to know? 
Well, let's see. I think we've covered the fact that, you know, it's all natural, it's organic, um, uh, perfectly, you know, safe, uh, safe to use. Um, you know, I think it's it just in the spirit of self-experimentation. Anybody who has an interest in it, it's easy enough to uh, to get some and try out. And uh, I would really encourage people to try it. Yeah, I, I would too, because uh, you've you've definitely um, spiked my interest in it. Just thinking of the applications of using hot sauce and using it as a therapy, um, just again from a, a nervous system point of view, if you're feeling I can even see this if someone who needs to sort of wake up but is caffeine sensitive, they could take some of this and it would it would get as you said, it would sort of perk you up a bit. It would change well, your feeling. Yeah, interesting that you say that because I'm actually in a studio, uh, you know, and and we came in to do some interviews in the studio. I came in with James Devlin, professional football player, uh, who uses it regularly during his workouts. And it was kind of interesting because we got up at like six, you know, we met at six thirty kind of early in the morning and uh, around 8.30, James said, you know, I really feel like I need a hot shot. And uh, so we, we weren't working out or anything, but it does, it, you know, it is, it, it just like you say, there's no caffeine or alcohol, but it gives you a bit of a boost. And I, I use it in that way myself. So uh, it, it is another, my, my nephew, uh, uh, who's in his 20s, when I first, uh, when we were first experimenting with it, you know, on, on, on family, uh, uh, family holidays, he drank some and he said, you know, I would totally take this for a hangover. So, <laughs> well, again, it, uh, you can imagine if this became mainstay for hangovers, gee whiz. <laughs> 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 yeah, again, I, I, this is why I love it. There's so many applications. I'm even thinking for students, again, instead of getting, because uh, you want that cognitive, you want that brain boost, but maybe the caffeine might overstimulate you. You could just play with a hot shot just to see if it sort of perks you up, gets gets you focused, and in you go, and see if you if you change your brain performance in that way. So it's a bit like a nootropic. I think it's a really interesting idea. Yeah, fantastic. Well, Bruce, um, I just want to say thank you so much for coming onto the show today and enlightening us um, about the product, which is uh, called Hot Shot, and uh, the website is teamhotshot.com. That's right. And yeah. you can also buy it on Amazon. Mm -hmm. I'm going to link to everything in the show notes on the episode page for anyone listening or watching this on YouTube. So if you want the links, it will be in the description area for people to purchase their, their product and uh, do a little bit of biohacking. <laughs> that sounds great. Fantastic. Well, thanks again, that, Bruce. Thanks, Gary. I really enjoyed it. That was great. fun. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.